In this presentation, we will take a look at our second method for recording credit card payments. Under this method, we're going to record the credit card payments to the proper expense accounts as we make the payments. This method works well if the client is making full payments on the credit card each month. In other words, if the charges that are being charged up are fully paid at the end of the month, this method works well. If we're running an outstanding credit card balance, then this method runs into some problems. First, we'll open for more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Open up our QuickBooks file. We're going to open up the second, uh, most second complicated <laughs> QuickBooks file, the number two file here. So we're going to be on QuickBooks data file. We're going to open QuickBooks 2 and we're going to open this QuickBooks file. Just double clicking on that. We should have a backup file as well to open it up and get you to that spot. Note that we haven't entered any adjustments to this QuickBooks file since we entered the data from the bank statements, but we will have the credit card payments in there now, and that's what we want to focus in on here. We've got the Home tab open. We've got the Open Windows open. You can open the Open Windows by going to View and Open Windows List. We're going to go to our Reports once again, Reports drop down up top, Company and Financial. We're scrolling down to the Balance Sheet Standard. We're going to change the date range up top from 01, 0119 to 022819. That's January 1st, 2019 to February 28th, 2019. Okay, so there's our information. It's going to be in the checking account. We're going to go to the profit and loss now because that's really where um, it's easier to see this data. So we'll go to the reports drop down, company and financial profit and loss report. Changing the date range once again from 010119 to 022819, January 1st, 2019 to February 28th, 2019. We're going to go back into this uh, account for the uncategorized expenses, double clicking on that item. And if we scroll down through this information, we are going to see that for January, we had the Visa card. This is February's Visa card. Here's January's for the 850. Now, if we double click on that, then here is our detail. So note that if we go to our statement now, if we opened up our statement, which we saw, which we have downloaded into our client folder for January, we saw that we had a zero balance, we had these additions, and we paid off, it looks like, the full 850. So we had 850 of charges, which we paid off in full. So what we can do then is just allocate these to the proper account uh, based on the data in, in this information. So we have three accounts here, three people that were paid, just like we had to do, three vendors, let's say, just like we had to do with the bank statements, we're going to take these vendors, decide which account is appropriate to go to for them, and then assign the proper account. We can actually do this right on the check if the full payment was made. So let's see that. Let's go to the check here. Here's the check. We're going to take it out of uncategorized, and I'm just going to keep, I'm just going to assign accounts as we go now. Now the first one's Lucky Linda's Casino. Now, I'm, I'm going to say we probably don't even have to ask the client there. We could say that's probably not a business expense. We're going to say that's going to be personal, most likely. Again, if they say that there is a business expense and they went there for, you know, meals and entertainment type of thing, possible. Uh, but it's not our question to really question that. Remember that that's going to be a tax question for the tax preparer. We're going to put it where the customer, you know, is advising us to put it. And we're not here to give tax advice or deduction advice. Should it be in there? That's that we're going to put it where it is, and then we'll say, hey, go to the, the tax advice or the financial statement uh, to get advice on the appropriateness of that. We're here going to put it to say it's personal, however. Now we're back in QuickBooks. Now notice we're not putting Linda's uh, casino here because we paid the credit card. That's who the check went to. So that doesn't change. We're not changing the vendor under, under this method. What we will do is just put the proper account, and in our case, it's going to be an equity account. So if we scroll up to the equity accounts, notice that QuickBooks gives us this account called draws. That's usually where we put it because that'll tell us how much stuff was going to be uh, personal throughout the time period that uh, we took out, meaning how much was taken out of the company during this time period, as opposed to just putting it into equity 
which should represent the accumulation of, of net income over the time period. So draws will give us an idea of how much was drawn out of the company and it won't be part of the income statement. So we're going to go to draws and I'm going to say that that was 500. And then in the memo, we probably want to put Lucky Linda's Casino to give us a note of what it is. Now note the problems here that we have uh, in doing this method. One, it'll be easy that we can record it, but we're not going to have the right date that it actually happened. They went to, to the casino on the 5th. We're not going to record it till it was paid sometime at the end of the year here. Probably wouldn't be till February in the other method in, in reality, because that's when the actual check was made to pay off this Visa card. Also, the vendor wouldn't be in the system. We, we just typed the vendor in as a memo, but we didn't, we didn't type in that, that the vendor as a vendor. So if we looked up the vendors, we wouldn't see any payment to uh, Lucky Linda's Casino because it, it was made under the credit card statements. So those are the kind of drawbacks that we would have under this method, but it's fast, pretty fast to enter under this method. The second one that we see here is going to the post office and then office depot. So those two look like legitimate expenses. So we're going to put here post office. Probably if I select the drop down, we're going to say post office, post and delivery, postage and delivery. Looks good. QuickBooks is going to try to guess what we want it to go to. I'm going to type in 630 because that's not the only account we want and type in post office. That's where it went. And then once again, it tries to guess where the other one's going to go to. This one goes to Office Depot. So I'm going to, I'm going to guess Office Supplies. And I'll type in Office Depot as the memo. So, and that's all we'll have. So notice we can break this out, then have the payment and break it out to uh, the appropriate expense accounts. And no, it'll all be recorded as of the end of January when the payment was made, not when the expenses were incurred. And it won't have the vendors in the vendor list, but we can note the vendors here. So that's another kind of simplified method we can use. We can say save and close and save that and close this back out. That'll move it out of the uncategorized and it'll put it into office supplies. So if we go in there, we had uh, this payment that was made on the Visa card. Double click it on that. There it is. Closing this out. Closing this out, we put uh, some to the balance sheet. If we go to the balance sheet, we put it into draws. So here's this draws. It's a negative equity, meaning it's on the balance sheet. It's going to bring down equity. It's like, the, it's like the owner took money out. What should have happened is the owner takes money out with cash and then goes and spends it on whatever personal whatever. But uh, if, if we go directly and take it out and spend it, from the credit card, business credit card on personal, we can just put it to draws and that'll not put it on the income statement. Okay, so now we'll do, we'll do the second one, profit and loss, back to the profit and loss for February. And this is where the problem will happen because we didn't pay off the full balance. So if we go into the uncategorized expenses again, and we scroll down and we go down to the second payment that was made in February, here it is. Double click on that item. We've got uh, 1,030 that was paid. Now, if we look at February's statement, here's January's, here's February. We paid, uh, we incurred charges of 1,520. So we didn't pay it all off. So here's our uh, vendors that we're going to have to put in place. But then we didn't pay the full balance. So now we have a problem here because uh, the check is for less than the balance here on the statement. So we'll have to deal with that in some way. So we'll go back to QuickBooks here. Now, the other thing I want to note is we could enter this directly into the register as we saw before, as the register we were using before by going to the banking, going to use register. And here's the register we were entering this information into. Here's our credit cards, uh, credit card. Now, if we wanted to just enter this directly into the into this account, into this register, as we did with the other transactions, as possible too, what we do is we use this split item down here. So we're on this transaction, we go split, and then it gives us this little drop down that gives us more accounts, more places that we can use 
in order to enter this data. So we'll do the same thing. We're going to delete the undeposited and do the same thing we did for January. And we're now going to look through this information. I'll close January now. And we want Staples and then Ted Steakhouse, FedEx, Amazon, and Office Depot. So Staples is pretty straightforward. We could probably assume that that's going to be some kind of office supply. So we'll go back to QuickBooks and we'll type in office supplies. Staples is 240. And then again, we probably want to put in the memo Staples. And again, that's just the drop down that we're assigning out. Now we got another one that we're going to just assign it out in the same way we did on the check. So the next one's to Ted Steakhouse. Let's say we asked, asked them on that and they say that that's personal. We're going to say that that's a draw. So I'm going to say, okay, Ted Steakhouse is a draw. That should go to an equity account because it's not business related. They're telling me it's not business related. So we're going to say, okay, it's going to go to draws then for 530. So anytime I see Ted's Steakhouse, I'm going to assume it's, it's personal now and put it to draws unless they tell us otherwise, unless they have a business meeting at Ted's Steakhouse. And then we have FedEx, which is probably going to be, uh, I think we postage and delivery. Let's put in the postage and delivery. That's going to be 130. And this Ted's is spelled wrong. Ted's Steakhouse. And then that's going to be FedEx. And then the next item we have here is going to be Amazon. So let's say that we ask them and they say that Amazon is a business related expense. And who's, I tried to type in Amazon. We can't really put Amazon expense in here. So we're going to have to put it somewhere. If they say it's business related, they, we could put it, we'd have to get more specific on it. And we could put it again to office supplies, probably to Amazon. Now notice only 130 is all we need to get up to that 1030 up here. And we just spent 430 there. So now the problem is these add up to more than the payment we made. Now I'm going to put this one to Amazon. And we're not done yet. We got another one for Office Depot. So Office Depot, again, Office Supplies. And notice if you start getting a huge Office Supplies number, then um, you want to make sure that you're allocating these correctly, that these are really Office Supplies and whatnot on it. Uh, but again, we're going to go by what, what the client tells us to, to categorize these as of. And we're going to say that this is going to be Office Depot. So, so now it won't let me record this now because there's 490 that, that is out of balance. It's showing us out of balance. If I tried to record this, I, well, it might, it might force it and put it to uncategorized. So I won't, I won't force it, but we, it, normally it'll give us a warning and say, Hey, there's a problem here because you're out of balance by this 490. So we have to do something with that now. And that of course is the balance that's, that will be outstanding that we haven't paid yet. And so we could then put this to a new account called the credit card, a liability account. This would then be a liability. So if we scroll up here, we don't see any liability here. There's going to be an order assets and then liabilities. And our only liability is payroll. So I'm going to put it into a new account and I'm going to call it Visa credit card. And we may even want to put like the last four digits of the number if we have it, the credit card number, because, and I've just made that number up, but that might help us if there's multiple credit cards. So we're just going to say tab and set that up. And then it's not an expense. It's going to go to the liability. Now they have a special one for the credit card here. So we'll put it into the credit card account. And so it's a liability account, especially a credit card, which they give us some options for helping us to track the credit card in that format. And we'll say save and close and then say record yes we want that to be changed okay so then we're going to close this back out close this back out and refresh this it should have removed it from the transaction detail so it's out of there now where did it put it refresh <laughs> we put it we put it into uh the staples so office supplies this office supplies often becomes like a, a dumping ground. So just, again, be careful if you got a lot of stuff going. If office supplies starts to look like it's a large number, you probably want to question it and say, hmm, is some of this not supplies equipment or something like that? But in any case, 
We've got some of this stuff here in office supplies. There's our transaction. If we close this back out, close this back out. Uh, we had postage and delivery. And there's our transaction here for FedEx. There's our check. Notice it goes to the check style, not back to the register when we double click on it. So that so notice what this method does is it is it it lets us do it all in one kind of cash basis transaction, but it's still we're still kind of creating a liability through this by this Visa credit card balance that we're that we're inputting here. But it lets us just simply enter a check and then assign out the check in accordance with the, the balance. Let's us kind of track that information out. Let's us make the income statement uh, proper here as best we can based on, on the information we have uh, so that uh, it could be easily used possibly to make the, the financial statements or the tax return at the end of the year. So it's grouped all these out. What it doesn't do is it doesn't track by vendor because I won't be able to find the vendor if I go to the, to the vendors up top in the vendor center. I won't be able to find uh, the vendors for for those particular payments. For example, Amazon isn't here. If I search for Amazon, it's not there. And that's because we didn't put the vendor in the vendor section. We put it into just a memo. So that's one of the downsides. Also, the dates won't be when the actual payment was made. I mean, it will be when the payment was made, but not when the charge was made to the credit card. So then let's take a look at the other side, which is on the balance sheet. Now again, we recorded some stuff to draws. Anything that's personal, that's where it goes, draws, because that won't be on the income statement and, and, uh, and it'll be just part of equity. And then we now made this credit card statement, which should be the, the difference here. So if we were to go to our credit card statement, we, we had this amount that was billed, 1520, and we paid if we go back to QuickBooks, we paid this 1030. So the difference then is going to be that 490. So if I close this back out, 490 then is a liability for the credit card. So that so the, the next statement we get, if we do this properly, then should have 490 after the beginning balance that's undue, that's still unpaid, that's due, that is unpaid, and then the additions and then the payments that we would have. And so that's one way that we can we can enter this a fairly fairly quick way to enter the credit card payments and just basically do it with one transaction and line it up with the cash payments. We just have to break out the detail based on the credit card statements. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.